happen. Britain's Prime Minister has linked Sunday's alleged chemical attack in Syria with the poisoning of former spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter, in both cases blaming Moscow. The events in Douma fit into a troubling wider pattern of acts of aggression and abuse of long-standing international norms on counterproliferation and the use of chemical weapons. In recent years, Russia's repeated vetoes at the UN have enabled these rules to be broken and removed mechanisms that allow us to investigate and hold to account chemical weapons attacks in Syria. We saw a similar recklessness last month with the use of chemical weapons on the streets of Salisbury. The UK's case for holding Russia responsible for the attempted murder of Sergei and Yulia Skripal is clear. OK, let's bring in Mike Randy now. He's the co-editor of the news website BS News. Good evening to you, Mike. We've just heard there, Theresa May, is trying to link the Skripal poisoning with the allegations of a chemical attack in Syria. Do you think there's a link there? I think there's some kind of tenuous link that the uh, RAF signals are based in Cyprus are trying to portray. Uh, I think I read earlier today there was... Um, uh, uh, some kind of communication intercepted between Damascus and Moscow uh, the day before the Skripal alleged attack, uh, talking about the de a delivery has been made. Um, I think the, uh, the, they're alluding to the fact that that might be a delivery of some kind of nerve agent. But again, this is so vague and, um, <laughs> and so untrustworthy that I don't think we can give it much credence, really. And, and I think the same goes for the rush to judgment from the British um, Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary in both cases, whether it's in Salisbury or in Syria. Um, no one seems to be looking at any kind of motive or means. And if we look at the means and motive of the Syrian Arab army, there, there is none. In, in fact, they have a motive not to use chemical weapons because they know what would happen. They know it would, uh, there would be uh, military intervention um, on the part of the West. So there's absolutely no reason to use it. There's no military reason to use chemical weapons in Syria at all. However, if we look at the terrorist groups like uh, Jaish al assalam they've already admitted in 2016 that they've used chemical weapons. Other groups have been known to have, possess chemical weapons. And as these groups are leaving East Ghouta and, and Douma in particular, um, Journalists that are there on the ground, including Vanessa Beely, they're actually seeing remnants of chemical weapons and, and chemical weapons laboratories that have been set up by terrorist factions. Uh, and these include gas canisters of chlorine. Um, so uh, what, what's really strange about the Duma case, in fact, is that some of the um, mainstream media in the West, the Washington Post and the New York Times, have actually put the caveats out to say uh, the reports are unverifiable. Uh, obviously, we know they're unverifiable because they're coming from partisan sources like the White Helmets. Uh, even the Foreign Office and the State Department in the U.S. has actually said the same thing, that reports are unverifiable. But once again, we have to take it on trust. What they say is true. And, um, and there's, again, a rush to judgment and possibly a rush to military action. So it's, um, it's really concern disconcerting the way that our politicians are behaving and the way the media pundits are behaving in the Western corporate media. Now, the, uh, I mean, the upshot of this, if, if you uh, believe what you see according to recent opinion polls, is that Theresa May's popularity is actually increasing. She's been bolstered by this anti-Russia stance, the rhetoric she's come out with over the Skripal case. Uh, does that surprise you? No, not really. I think it's, it's because of the... Effectively, 100% of the corporate media has got on board with the story, again, just like Iraqi weapons of mass destruction. And they, many in the public sort of get confused with political strength and, um, and military jingoism. And so by calling uh, Jeremy Corbyn a traitor and a, a Kremlin stooge or a, a, a Moscow um, idiot, then, uh, then that's just playing into the hands of the media who like to have um, an enemy, a, you know, a bogeyman character. Um, that, that doesn't mean that Theresa May is coming from a position of strength. Far from it. I think that they're, they're really scrambling. I think they've dug themselves into a hole that they can't extricate themselves from now. I think it's almost impossible for the British government and the British state to actually come back from this, d despite what the evidence will reveal. And I suspect that the evidence is going to show that it can't be linked to Russia, that the, uh, the alleged nerve agent could have been made from any number of state actors or even private parties. So um, th there is no credible evidence yet, and there's no credible evidence in Syria linking the alleged chemical weapons attack 
to the Syrian government forces. So there we have the similarities. Um, whether there's an actual connection between the two, like the RAF signals unit in Cyprus are trying to allege, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Mike, appreciate your time. I guess Mike Raddy, co-editor of BS News. Thank you. Now, the British government's come under fire.